so I asked you guys to give me some hot takes and you gave me a lot of them a lot so the Pulse King Yikster offered a little help so it's just us scrambling together here in this video hope you enjoy all right uh, time to read I'm gonna get a lot of doll fans coming at me, but I didn't mind doll's death that much She never stood out to me as a character and was kind of annoying when she kept getting killed and just coming back It just kind of got repetitive. I like doll and I think people misunderstand her But at the same time she was kind of just there and, and a bit annoying now. What do you think about that? Well, you know as a doll fan myself. I do you have still the digital chat gun? Do you have it? Do you have it? I, I, I agree. <laughs> Doll was robbed in the last two episodes. I, I Her death is like basically universally hated on for just being bad. I wouldn't say she was annoying. Like, I, I don't know if I agree with this take necessarily. Yeah, well, at first for me, like, I thought it was cool because, you know, Mason appeared much more sinister. But then when I kind of looked back at her, back at that, and yeah, like, what the f*** was that? <laughs> that was... Stupid. Yeah, the problem with her death is in that same episode, we have Tessa's death. So, so her death just gets completely overshadowed. Yeah, it feels like Liam wanted to do something with her, but like, I don't know. He decided to just change the plans. I don't know, yeah. There, there definitely was something else planned for her, I feel. Oh, oh no. God. Right. Oh, God. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's that. That's funny. I, that is that just seems very contrarian. She she doesn't even she has like a minute of screen time in like episode seven. Like she really needs more screen time so she gets time to shine. How do you watch the entire show and you're like, yeah, you know, I could really do with less J screen time. I, I think it really takes away from the show. Newsy is toxic and is basically Uzi's lapdog and has no personality besides Uzi. Uzi doesn't like it uh, when N is overprotective. Their moments are cute, no doubt, but it completely ruins N's character. And he talks way too fast. What do I think about that? I, I, I do have to agree. Um, those two characters, they, they are completely reliant on each other. Like, they cannot stand on their own, their own two feet. It feels like so yeah that's that's not healthy in my opinion whatsoever yeah literally when they got separated in episode seven like each character felt so dull for some reason because i don't know well, i mean just... yeah it, yeah they're just bumbling around until they can reunite some point later in the episode that's that's all they do really the show kind of lacks in the comedy most jokes are funny but some ruin the theme and come in the wrong time well that's Totally, we totally agree with that. I think you do too. Especially episode 5, like... Oh man, you, you took the words out of my mouth, man. Okay, okay. Comedy is very subjective. What you think is funny, I may not think is funny. Like, vice versa, right? But there is no doubt that Murder Drones being a horror comedy, it's a, it's such a double-edged sword, right? Because you have all these moments of suspense and horror that you want to actually make serious, but you can ruin all of that with a single joke. It tries to take itself seriously, but then just a joke. No, don't take me seriously. That's so stupid. The show is downright fucking horrible at storytelling. I found myself not, not understanding basic stuff about episodes I should understand. It took me a whole fucking lot to understand what the absolute solver is. I didn't even get the whole plot of episode 5 back in the day. I I, I think we have to agree with that. Yeah, literally. Uh, like, with everything they said. Yeah, like, especially episode 5. Uh, episodes 1 and 2, they're good with handling exposition. But but then you have the very subtle sh the Tessin reveal in episode 4. And then um, episode 5, which we are now mentioning two hot takes in a row, but it's still relevant. Absolutely, uh, a dumpster fire. Yeah, the first episodes, uh, as you mentioned, they were kind of understandable for a specific reason because, you know, they were having fun with the characters. They were actually focusing on the events. They were focusing more on the events. Then the show just became a plot dump, literally. Episode 4, episode 5, kind of episode 6 sometimes, for um, the cliffhangers. Not that they are done badly, but you can't leave us on an emotional cliffhanger for 8 months. Well... Okay, so about the cliffhangers, some of them are kind of okay, I guess. Every episode in this show ends with a cliffhanger. Some are way more impactful than others, but um, I feel like a breather episode where it just ends, it's just like n like nothing too serious. Like that would be pretty, uh, pretty cool if you ask me. Because if you're ending every episode with a cliffhanger, it's just like you're going to get used to it over time. For the latter half of the comment, I, I have to, like, it, you can't necessarily view that as a fact. Uh, for like like later viewers of the show because like you know if someone's binging the entire show they're not going to give a shit about the eight months part but obviously like w us current fans are going to care about that number six or number five actually the subtitles do not work in the live stream for episode seven and i was visibly mad trying to decipher what the english was that that's more of a complaint than a hot take yeah do i agree with the english part that's pretty kind of 
sometimes difficult to understand. For Tessa especially, yeah. It's for me, I think it's most of the show because they talk pretty damn fast, honestly. Yeah, that, I, that was a good comment. I have to agree with what most of that person said. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Holy sh Okay. <laughs> um, first, uh, the just hanging out scene is kind of stupid. Oh yeah, yeah. The scene in episode seven where he's like, point, he, like he like draws in the oil, like I'm hanging out with your daughter. I don't know. For me, I think it was a pretty good part. Like you know, I think it was pretty well placed. I I don't know. I think uh, that's like one of the few moments where Newsy actually like is good. I would say. Sure, it's stupid. Sure, it kind of kills all the tension the fight scene builds up, but it, it just, it pays off the homage to the entire show just like that. Yeah, I agree too. J is slash was more useless than V. She got killed off and did one useful thing afterwards. Either contribute or leave. Um, that is debatable. I personally would actually argue they're just on the same level. Because they both do jack shit for the entire show, but now they're kind of important in like the later half of this, right? But like at the same time, V was kind of like used as a plot device. Yeah, it's not a good use, but it kind of like moved the plot like episode it 3. It is a use, I guess, yeah. It is a use, yeah, at least Jade didn't get any screen time at all. V did get some stuff, like episode 3, she was tricked by Doll, and they gotta go and save her. That's something, I guess. Like if V wasn't there, I don't think the whole episode 3 would even happen. I don't know. I feel like they're just the same level of useless, like I said. Not a hot take, but I wonder what the show would have been like if it was more episodic. I don't think there's much I can say on that. Nah, me too, honestly. The show yes. is episodic, because if you're episodic, well, you're made up of loosely connected episodes. Or just separate ones. And the entire show is very loosely connected between episodes. You have time jumps and you have just complete skips, it feels like. As much as I love the characters, a lot of their personalities need to be majorly inferred. An example is that V apparently feels like a burden and hates asking for help, despite needing it and wanting it, as though no one need uh, as though no one needs her. This is apparently what her song was about, but it's not really shown. Okay, that is also pretty debatable, because a lot of the characters' personalities are very linear; they're shown right in your face. But like V is like the one exception. It feels like. Pointing out what trope you are referencing isn't funny. It wasn't funny in Scream, and it isn't funny here. And it, it's it's just talking about the like the meta humor, like the comedy, you know. So like uh, like episode four, right? Cabin fever. It's um Jason, you know. Episode six, Jurassic Park, and yeah, yeah it's, um, it's, yeah. It, it, it's just saying how like um every episode has a trope, so it's not funny by referencing it out loud to the audience. Well, yeah. Maybe, but like I think it it is debatable. It is debatable, because once again, humor is very subjective. A lot of the important moments are in freeze frame moments, slash the episodes don't feel like they're connected. I I cannot agree more. Absolutely, just true. Like I said for a previous hot take, the show is very loosely connected. The time jumps and constant um like disconnect between episodes is very in your face. And about the fact that a lot of the important lore is only in the background details i don't know i think it's more fun for a fandom who is like been waiting for three years for the whole show to be finished pointing out those tiny details would be fun i think but if it is making it the whole storytelling is just background details as murder drones does it's kind of right. yeah i agree yeah absolutely not even a hot take but i hate how Tag is essentially screwing murder drones over. I don't care about the saturated in in uh, I have okay. no idea what it's that like, is. Oh, I have no mouth, I must scream. That's what it is. Oh uh, <laughs> I, I want the cool robot show, even if this ends up only being one season, I'd rather it be from the story being naturally concluded and not rushed in favor of the view pumping show. Totally agree. I honestly totally agree with this. I don't think you'll find any disagreement from most Murder Drones fans. Uh Digital Circus has completely overshadowed it. It's just seen as like the sister show now. Like the like the fucking like cousin that you see once at fucking Thanksgiving. That's all that, like, the Murder Drones is at this point. But, like, I don't know, the Amazing Digital Circus did actually overshadow Murder Drones, but at the same time, it... It did give it a bit of a boost, so it's not all bad. It made more people accessible to indie shows and it watch did, other yeah. Shows. yeah. The episodes need to be just a bit longer. I get that it's mostly because of the, the resources uh, slash budget, 
but I do feel like a few more minutes tacked onto the episodes would very much help it in the long run. That is objectively true for a lot of reasons, actually. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of runtime, maybe like two to three more minutes tacked onto each episode, it'll go a very long way. Yeah, like most of the problems of the show is just them trying to rush all of the things out. But yeah, if they like uh, split the merger drones lore in half, they give more time to development and conclusion. This show would be almost perfect. Like this show has so much potential, but the, the rushing is what ruins it. Yes, I, I think I agree with pretty much everything except for five, because humor is very subjective, like I said. Ships are overrated and people get too mad over them. People are too crazy over making two things like each other. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I honestly, yeah. Like, I see people ship a, uh, N and U, N and V, they're like crazy over it. If you say anything bad uh, about any of the characters, they might eat you alive. I, m me personally, I never saw the appeal in shipping. You, like you're just you're just being cupid for two fictional characters, just matchmaking and shit. <laughs> two characters liking each other, like what are you gonna get I, from it? You gain cool fan art, I guess. The, the 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 fan art is the only good part about it, honestly. Yeah, that's that's about right. Uzi's annoying, V's annoying, and only N is tolerable. Baldus, the bald guy's brother, I'm gonna have to gonna have to disagree. I think they're all insufferable for many reasons. I would say V's the least insufferable though, because She's not, like, the main focus of the show. The beginning of the show, they were pretty interesting. Uzi was that edgy, yeah. like, I don't know, dead issues and stuff. I don't know. I, I know that dead issues is kind of overused in many shows. But, it like, right. they could have built over it. But, no, they didn't really, honestly. V started as the psycho psychotic, that killer, and she, she wants to kill everyone. Then she just became that, I don't know, that character who cares about everyone f out of nowhere. Yeah. Straight up, yeah. And as the beginning, well, he was really cool, and I don't know, I, I used to like him much, but uh, yeah, at yeah. the end, he <laughs> started to like, yeah, he started to become like pretty boring because I don't know, the whole tone of the show started to get dull. Very much so, yeah. And, and started off as basically everyone's favorite, right? But I feel like over time, he definitely lost a lot of his support. He, he definitely regained it with episode 7. I think that episode 4 and 5 are a little bit overhated and that Doll's death was meant to be tragic and unfair on purpose. I also think that the skit... Oh no. <laughs> oh my god. No. Oh, oh, oh no. My god. <laughs> Decent twists, positives, outweigh the negatives. Okay, I, uh, there, there are two parts about it. Three parts about this comment. Uh, 4 and 5 are a little bit overhated, maybe and maybe not. Like, some people say that they are absolutely unwatchable, and no, honestly, they are kind of solid as a first watch. But after watching, yeah, they kind of get insufferable, honestly. I have to agree. That's pretty true. There's not much I can really say to that. Yeah, and about Doll's death, Okay. Uh, it was meant to be tragic. Oh, yeah, that's a big can of worms still. Yeah. It, it is tragic, but not for the reasons you think. It's tragic because of how they butchered her f***ing character. Just like that. Like, the scene was kind of cool, but that's it. A lot of people like Tessin. Uh, you think that the positives outweigh the negatives. That is not a hot take. That's actually just the general consensus for a lot of uh, different reasons. It's reminiscent of Liam's old works. It's one of the few genuinely horrifying moments in the show. Like, I, I don't know, Tessin, or I like to call it Shinessa. Don't, like, be mad about it. <laughs> or, or just call it skin. Call it condom. <laughs> Tessin, um, I, like, honestly, the idea is pretty cool. The way, they, the way they pulled it off was pretty cool. But the fact that they built it on Tessa it made it have negative parts. But the most part, yeah, it's pretty good. Glitch's influence has heavily damaged the show. It's become very clear that Glitch had very little confidence in Liam in the beginning, and vice versa. Liam's creative decision had been clearly hampered by Glitch's involvement in the show, and with a bad Glitch show, um, comes very bad Glitch cliches. They, they've been littered all over Murder Drones, and Liam Vickers' style has been suppressed in favor of a much more childish and tween-friendly tone. It's become evident that Glitch forced Liam to change the show many times over during production, resulting in the inconsistent mess we have now. Is That is correct. Before before uh, Murder Drones, right? Uh, since Sunset Paradise and Meta Runner, the two other shows that Glitch had, they were made by Kevin and Luke, who are the founders of Glitch. Uh, th their writing is very questionable at times. And it, it's very clear that a lot of the problems uh, problems with murder drones 
come from uh come from fucking glitch's influence like that yeah, said. i get it that glitch's influence did actually sometimes ruin the show but at the same time i think it's not exactly glitch's influence it's mostly liam's fear of glitch not being able to pull the show off another take would be that they should have just killed off thad lizzie and khan this would have happened in episode three or four and it would have injected a much needed stakes and consequences into the show with either doll killing them or solver uzi this would have made the two of them seem like actual threats and lead to some interesting reactions among the remaining cast after an actual side character is killed off, as opposed to just some random worker drone. Not only that, it would have been a good signal for the shifting direction of the show, in po of the show post episode 4, uh, with the show disposing of the worker drone colony characters as they serve very little purpose as they stand. Well, like, I kind of agree and disagree at the same time. Like, yeah, I, c I can see where, uh, see where this comment is coming from, but uh, judging by the way Hunter Drones handles that dead characters, I don't really think adding much dead characters would help, because just look at episode 4, many, many dead characters and nobody cares. What, what I have to say about that is the show, right, Murder Drones has very little murder. The only murder is just side characters, and in the later half of the show, it's just actual characters because you know they have they have to have a plot somehow, right? So if if they kill off Thad, Lizzie, and Khan hypothetically, like let's say episodes three and four, like Dyer said, to Dollar Solver Uzi, it, it does actually make the show better in a sense because you know that no one's safe, anyone can die. I think Glitch doesn't want to make the show very bleak because I think that's Glitch's view of killing characters and probably Liam too. I don't know. That's a fair point. Alice should have had more screen time. Uh, yeah, she she definitely should have. She, as it stands, she's a minor headache at best. She just puts a magnet on Uzi and gets killed off. Simple to the point. That's what I'm gonna say. She's just like an obstacle for the for episode six. That's it. Yeah, it, it's just a mini obstacle of that. Just like a minor hurdle. Yeah. Nothing too bad. Yeah, if we got more of Alice's, you know, I don't know, backstory with Nori and stuff, that would have been much cooler and more depth. It would have, yeah. Um, yeah. You're gonna hate me for this one, but Doll's death was amazing. I just wanna talk to him. I just wanna talk to him. I just wanna talk to him. I think this because characters try as hard as they can to reach a goal, putting all their life and work into something they feel like they need to achieve, suffering horribly along the way, and no matter what uh, and no matter what they do, failing in the end is just beautiful. She even had a chance to come back if she was lucky enough. Her core was still moving around just before Senessa, uh, Skin, or Tessin ate her. Uh, her becoming part of the thing she sought to destroy is very poetic. I can't justify it further than that, so I'm just gonna shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay. Um, well, about Doll's death, like, maybe seeing characters trying and then failing is good, but the good part about that is seeing them come back again, that's the good part about it. But then just being killed off without even any backstory, any, anything, they, she just became a villain, episode 3, and then she just died. That, that's, that's stupid. It, it's completely overshadowed by Tessa's death later yeah. on. It, it's very bad that they, that they just killed two characters off in one episode. Because you're going to have one that's way more talked about than the other. And I'm going to be real. Like, there, there's... Doll fans are few and plentiful. Like, they're like, are few and far between, rather. Because um, like, there's not many of them. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, nobody appreciates that coolness. Uzi is a terrible protagonist who regresses as a character throughout the entire series. She goes from an edgy teen robot with her own motives to, uh, for her actions to an uwo uh, to an ubu girl slash uh, in love interest who only gets more interesting when she's possessed by a, a better character, Sin. Not to mention, she makes more episodes uh, she's a part of actually worse. Episode five is a prime example. Well, about uh, the part that she is included in episode five, yeah, I really agree, because it made made it much more confusing. I think everybody can universally agree that Crozy was not. A, th a thing that we needed. Um, an episode with N and uh, V actually just being themselves free from Uzi would be much more better for a lot of reasons. I, I, I would argue she does definitely regress a lot. She goes from kill all humans to N love me in like the matter of like three episodes. And yeah, about her getting possessed, yeah, that these moments are actually really good. Like, do you know that N loves Uzi and she is getting possessed? That's not another good thing about the Nuzi ship, that's it. Yeah, that's it, man. <laughs> so yeah, these were pretty, pretty actually good. These were good, yeah. You wanna do an outro, actually? Mm, I don't Wait. have outro, so... Yeah, bye, humans. Bye.